Hey guys, welcome back to the Adobe Live YouTube channel. My name is Jacob, or better known as by Jacob Paris, and I've partnered with Adobe on an eight part series teaching you everything you need to know about turning your digital designs into real physical products with Adobe Fresco and Adobe Illustrator. We're on our second to last episode today, and it's all about formatting your art for printing. If you haven't seen the previous six episodes, definitely go back and check those out. A lot of this is gonna be in context of those previous episodes, but of course, if you're just looking for the best way to format your art for printing, printing. This is going to be a great episode to tune in for. I'm really excited about this one today, so let's just hop into it. Formatting your art for printing. There's a lot of different techniques to do this, and there's a lot of ways to either overcomplicate it or oversimplify it. So I really wanted to cover this in the easiest and the most transparent way possible. So you can apply these tools to whichever technique of printing or designing that you're trying to do. So it's not exclusive to if you're just going to one print shop or another print shop. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, what are you gonna be producing? Do you wanna make t-shirts? Do you wanna make posters? Do you want to make stickers? All of these are going to require different exporting of files and different ways of setting up these files, which is really important because if you're not sending over the right files to print shops, then they're going to have a really hard time producing your product. In this example, we're going to be covering three printing techniques. We're going to be talking about printing on t-shirts or pretty much any garment, printing posters, specifically just standard cardstock posters with vibrant colors and printing stickers. So let's hop over into Illustrator and let's get started. So here over in Illustrator, we're pretty much exactly where we left off in the last video. And one of the most important things to start with is knowing what size posters you're gonna be printing. I'm very partial to square, easy to transport posters. So I think for this specific project, and since our design is already square, I'm going to make my poster a five by five. I think they're very standard to find for frames in all different types of stores. And it's at a good price point at my local print shop. Now you may be looking at this Illustrator file and say, oh, you're already set up, you're, you're good to go. But you'll notice we initially set up this artboard in pixels. So the size of our artboard is huge, like 40 or 50 inches huge. And we're not gonna be printing a 40 inch poster, like I said. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to file new, go to your artboard and set to the size that you're going to be printing this product for. So you can either click on the inches over here and type it in, but I have this saved over here as a custom five by five inches. You wanna make sure that your color mode is on RGB and that your raster effects are on high. You absolutely can put your color modes on CMYK if you're going with a CMYK printer. Obviously this is gonna limit the color options that you have and it's gonna change your initial finished product. So just keep that in mind. But the printer that I'm going through can do RGB digital files. So it makes it a little bit easier for me. So let's go ahead and click create. Now we have our initial art file. If you've set this up with me before, this is gonna be very simple and very straightforward on how you wanna do this. Pretty much all you're gonna do is click on your design. You're gonna click Command C, go over to the untitled document and click Shift Command V. It's gonna be a lot larger than what we initially had just because again, this is going to be an actual five by five. Let's go ahead and highlight this and click Command G and zoom in on these characters. You'll notice that a few of these characters lost their colors and that's very easy to fix. Just click I to copy a color and click K to paste that color in. Super simple. And now it's like nothing was wrong. So what we can do is we can literally click on our image and just scale it down holding shift to make sure that is scaling down equally. Also, this is just a quick reminder. We covered this in a previous episode, but if you're noticing that your characters are doing this funky scaling thing and maybe they're not scaling accordingly, like they feel too thick, uh, make sure you click scale corners and scale strokes and effects. This is going to scale your illustrator art proportionately to the canvas itself. And that's really, really useful for sizing for prints. So we'll go ahead and scale this down a little bit more. And one thing I wanna point out that you should definitely reach out to your printing company for is most printers are going to have some form of margins for their printing process. In this case, with the company that I'm working with, they have a quarter inch margin. And that's very easy to set up in Illustrator to make sure you're not going outside of that margin. You go up to view, click rulers and click show rulers. You'll see that we have our five inch artboard size. And what we can do is click on this left side of the rulers, hold shift and just drag it over and it'll snap right into place right at that quarter inch mark. We can do that the same on this side and same coming down quarter inch and then a little further quarter inch. So we can just go ahead and line up 
our art to these ruler lines. Hold shift, size it accordingly. Let's just make sure this is all lined up. And now you have your poster actually set up in Illustrator, ready to print, and it's really, really easy. Before we move into exporting, I wanna talk about setting up for stickers and merchandise as well. While you are working in vectors and it does make it a lot easier, some printers only accept PNG files. So we definitely wanna make sure that our artwork is the right size or a high quality, high size. So when it's being printed, it's not low quality. So we're gonna start a whole nother artboard. Go ahead and click new, and we're just gonna do 3000 by 3000. That's always been the standard for me. I like it the best and it's the easiest to work with, but make sure you turn your DPI up to 300. This is gonna ensure you that you have the highest quality image and the highest quality prints. So same thing, we're gonna copy over our characters, click Command C, go over to our second untitled document and click Shift Command V. This is gonna print our characters in here. And because we're gonna be printing this on a shirt and with some stickers, we are not gonna need this background. So we'll go ahead and delete this background. And I wanna have an artboard that's specially for the t-shirt art and an artboard specifically for the stickers. So what we can do is we can drag this over here, go to window, artboard, and let's make a new artboard. Let's zoom out here just a little bit and let's copy our characters over and paste them over in this artboard. Again, we'll just fill in these gaps real quick. Great. So let's start with the stickers because it is gonna be the easiest. For these stickers, obviously we're not gonna have text specifically for these stickers. So we can go ahead and remove the text just by clicking the direct selection tool and highlighting it and click delete. We're also not gonna necessarily want a shadow for these stickers because we want them to stand out in their own way. And let's ungroup these characters and let's drag them just to where they're in place and make sure that we can knock out any import errors. So filling in any gaps. Maybe we'll arrange it like this. This is a really good time to make sure that your stickers are the right size. If you're ordering stickers that are just simply three by three die cut or two by two die cut, they're going to be generally sized to what your Illustrator file is, but obviously you want them to be proportionate. I wouldn't want this little mushroom to be bigger than this mushroom. So scaling them generally and then messing with the size and seeing what your printer has available is really important as well. Now let's move on to our shirt design. This one's actually really easy. Really, we don't have to change too much about this. Just make sure that your file is fully grouped up. Make sure that there's no errors in the coloring of the image itself. And we already made sure that we removed that background, so that's not something we have to worry about. Another thing I like to do before exporting is I like to make a color library, not only for myself, but for the company, because having access to these swatches can make it a lot easier to make these prints more accurate. And it's just just nice to have a backup in my opinion. I get a little worried about that sometimes, especially with being a colorblind artist. Sometimes prints just don't come out how you like, and it's important to try to mitigate that step and communicate as much as you can in order to get the closest you can to what your design will look like. So go up the window and go to swatches. And here you'll notice we'll have the swatches panel. And what we can do is size this up a little bit, click on this folder, and we'll add a new swatch group and we'll name it mushroom characters and adding swatches to this swatches panel is very very easy all you want to do is click i i drop tool a specific color that you're trying to add to your swatch panel and just click new swatch and okay and what you can do is you can click v for your selection tool and click on that swatch that was just added to your general swatches library and drag it down to the specific folder that is named the mushroom characters and it's that simple. You literally just wanna highlight and add all of your colors, and I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so all of our colors are imported into this swatches folder. And we can even go up to these three lines up here and save this swatch library as an Illustrator file. So we'll name this mushroom colors or mushroom characters. And instead of our swatches, let's just go to our documents and let's just save that in there. So now, as you can see on the screen here, this file is saved and you can import it directly into Illustrator and it will give you all the colors that you're using. Once you have everything organized, what you can do is you can make a folder for yourself in any place that works best for you. And that'll make it easy to have a central place to export all of your art files. So let's move into exporting these art files, starting with your poster. This is also really simple, but there's a lot of different ways to do it. I typically like to export my poster files two ways. The first way, is exporting it as just a regular old PNG. So we'll go ahead and go to our mushroom character folder and click on use artboards. This is gonna make sure that your image is gonna be saved around this specific artboard and not just your actual image. 
because it does like to crop it and it can be a little annoying. Now name that something that you'll remember. So maybe we'll do mushroom underscore poster. We know that it is gonna be the PNG version of this poster. So we'll just copy the name and just click export. It'll show you some options in your exporting. For your resolution, you wanna have it set to high. Anti-aliasing, I typically don't change. And for your background color, make sure you click white because if you're exporting this as transparent, you're not gonna be able to see that border, which are our margin lines and they're kind of important. Click okay, and then it's saved over. This next exporting method is more of like a backup for me. I just like to go to file and click save as. This is just like you're saving any file on your computer. Same here with the mushroom character. We'll click Command V, and now we have mushroomposter.ai. The difference between the AI and the PNG is pretty much as straightforward as you can get. It is the Illustrator file and a static PNG art file. So we'll go ahead and save that as well. And now that we're all saved up and we have those exported to our folder, we can exit out of this. Next up, we're gonna wanna do our T-shirt. It's gonna be a very similar technique to how we did the poster where we just go up to file, export, export as. Now when we click on use artboards, instead of clicking all, click on the range to just be one. That is gonna make sure that this export is only gonna export this first artboard. So let's go ahead and name this to mushroom transparent BG. Let's go ahead and click export. And same as before in the PNG option, you're gonna see the options in preview. In preview this time, we're actually gonna click transparent. We want this to be transparent because when we are opening this file, I'll actually show you. The background of this file is transparent. This makes it really easy to print on t-shirts or on other products because if you have a background, it's going to print on that product with the background and we just don't want it. Something I do want to put an asterisk in if you are sitting off your designs to a printer for apparel is the amount of colors you use is limited depending on what type of printing process you go through. If you go direct to garment printing, you're gonna have a much easier time with colors because there is really no color limit because it's like a printer that you're printing shirts on. But if you're doing screen printing, you're gonna to wanna to limit your colors to maybe four or five maximum. That's usually even very expensive. Typically when I have very detailed designs like this, I like to usually choose one color or maybe two colors and make it more of like an outline. So what we could even do is if we wanted to, we could go ahead and click on our live paint bucket tool and just start highlighting all of these colors and recoloring them in. Let's zoom in just a little bit. So maybe we end up with something like this. What we can do is we can just go over to file, export, and export this as mushroom transparent two color because our two colors are black and white. You can use the artboard, make sure it's artboard one, saving it as a PNG, let's click okay. And when we open this, you'll see that we have that white outline around our text as well as the black and white characters. And this again is just the easiest way if you're going with like a screen printing option or something like that. The last thing we're gonna talk about, of course, is going to be exporting this art as stickers. And yeah, you could go in and you could make individual artboards and put these on all individual artboards and save them out. But there's actually a really quick and easy way to do it in Illustrator that saves me a lot of time. If you go to Window and go down to Asset Export, you'll have this little box that pops up. What you can do is you can highlight all of these characters and you'll see down here a plus and multiple pluses. This plus is going to exactly what it says, make an asset based off of your highlighted characters. So if I click this, it's going to make an image with all of our characters in this bounding box, but we don't want that. What I'm gonna do is actually click on this other option that says generate multiple assets. And what that does is for each individual grouped character, it is making an asset for that character, which is really, really useful. And you'll notice these characters are to their bounding boxes, not to the artboard itself. What we can also do is go into our settings here. If we click down here, we can change our PNG format to PNG 8. And under this cog here, we can set our background color to transparent. This is just gonna make sure that our assets are transparent when we export them. And we can also change where these characters are going which is in that mushroom character one folder. And let's just click export assets. You'll see export for untitled is complete. We can change that if we want to, but here we have our folder with our exported artwork ready for stickers on a transparent background. Super, super easy. 
And that's pretty much all there is to it. We have our folder set up. We have our Illustrator file. We have our PNG for our poster. We have our swatches file. We have our transparent full color and our transparent two color design. And we have our setups for our stickers as well. So we are literally ready to send this off to the printer and get our items produced. Like I said before, look into your options when you're trying to produce products and see what works best for you. If you're printing at home or if you're sending it off to someone locally, or if you're working with a bigger company, make sure you take advantage of these assets and see what's best for them and what's the easiest way for them to receive these assets. I I pretty much covered every single way that they potentially would ask. So you don't necessarily have to worry about something random coming up. Typically they do have some people who specialize in converting this art on the team to kind of help you out and just communicate. But there really is no wrong way to produce merchandise. I would just suggest going into it, see what you like, see what works best for your budget and have fun because that's the most important part. I'm gonna send out my assets to a local print shop about 20 minutes away from me. And I'm super excited because my prints and my stickers are coming in next week. So I'll have them ready to show you for our final episode, which is all about advertising your product. This is the final step and the final arc to our eight part series, because of course you want people to see the work that you're putting out. I really hope you learned something today and I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I know having art set up or sitting at your product can be a little overwhelming, but again, I highly encourage you to at least try. There's a lot of companies that let you at least sample products and I promise you won't regret it. See you in the next and final episode. Keep creating. Bye guys.